So you've got this 1994 Lincoln Mark 8, and it's two inches off the ground. And you can't drive it to work because it hits every gnat in the road. I'm exaggerating, but it's a fact of life. When your air ride system goes out, your car is literally that high off the ground on some models. I'm going to show you how to fix that with the help of strutmasters.com and Swan Yago Performance. So let's get to it and look at what we need to get this job done. You've got to have basic hand tools. That's really important. A pry bar just in case you need it. You never know. You might have to hit something with a hammer. Just make sure it's nothing on the exterior that will mess up the look of your car. But this right here is what you need. You get your kit from Strutmasters and it's lovely because it converts your car from air ride to struts in one day. It's going to take you about four hours, five hours to do this job. Let's tear this baby open, see what we got. Now your kit's going to come with a set of matched front struts that are designed to replace your factory air system. I'm going to show you how to install it all so you'll be ready to rock. Now if you do the back of the car, it's going to come with the springs and all the necessary components you need to do the back of the car. It's real simple. And in this case, it's springs. Now guys, ladies, I've told you this before. This is the most important part of this whole install. The instructions. Don't be that guy named Don and just go, ha, oh, I know how to do this. I've done this a million times. You're not that guy. Some of you people out there have never done this before. Take these instructions. Read them. If you run into help, call the tech department. That's why they're there. Let's get to it. In case you're wondering, I already loosened the lug nuts. I cheated. She's a junk to me. Now if you guys remember, if you've ever seen one of these videos before, this is a two-step switch. You have to turn it, it goes to a certain part, the air will come out, and then you push it in and turn it again, and it'll bring it so it can get the plug out. This is how you get it out. There's also an electrical switch that goes in there. It's for the, it's for the ride sensor. That way all you got to do is just take that out, Personally, I prefer to just unplug everything, coil it up, wire tie it up so it's added away, and forget about it. You'll learn how to turn off the, the compressor switch, which is inside the car, later on. Call the tech department for that. It'll be easier. And then you're ready to go. Now, all that's left is putting in the spring. Real easy. Now, before you put the spring in, it's really important that you, this plate goes in the top. It's got a little bolt there to locate it. Goes in the hole. And that's all it does. It just, it's held in by the weight of the vehicle. So you got to remember that when you put it in. It's really important to get this bolt in the hole in the center. And it's also important to make sure that your springs, the writing, is facing the rear of the car. So it would be like that. That locates the spring where it needs to be. Let's see if we can get this in. Let's see what we can do here. You know what? Just to make my life easier, and we're going to have to take the shocks out anyway, I'm going to disconnect this shock absorber because it's holding my lower control arm. Because this car has independent rear suspension, it has an upper and lower arm. I'm going to undo this shock to let the rear end come down a little bit more so I can get the spring in. So let me get the tools for that. Give us a little bit more. Now, in some instances, 
If you don't have enough, well, dare I say, ass to push this thing down, you'll have to disconnect this lower sway bar, this sway bar mount for the rear end. I think I can get it though. I'm a portly 260 pounds. I think I can pull it off. Let's see. Ain't gonna happen. This is why you read the instructions. Prime example right here, guys. If I would have read the instructions like I told you to or had the instructions nearby, I would know that this has to come out. I'm doing it this way to show you the mistakes that you can run into. It's really important. You take the shock off, you take your sway bar off. It's going to help you later on down the road because now you're not fighting it. If you look, you can see the sway bar is going up and down when I push on it. That's because the sway bar is doing its job by keeping you up there. It's not letting the rear end flex like it's supposed to. Another thing while you're in here, you can see this bushing is actually broke and it's dry rotted. You're in here, change the sway bar bushings. It's not a big deal. It's just a, a long bolt, basically. You undo it, put the new bushings in, and you're ready to rock and roll. Now, I'm cheating. Being that I'm not replacing the sway bar bushings, also known as the end link bushings, being that I'm not replacing them, I'm just letting one side run off. One side's tighter than the other because there's a nut at each end, so I'm just going to take off the bottom one. As you can see, when it comes back around right here, in the shaft, there's a slot. That's where your wrench would go, just like that, so you can get either the top or bottom off. But being that we're not, we're not doing the whole thing, I'm not going to worry about it right now. out look at how much room we've gained by being by, by blah, blah. look at how much room we've gained by undoing that sway bar bushing okay now we can get our spring put my cap on make sure my lettering's to the back slide it all in push it down what am I hooking on there I'm hooking on something There it is. There it is. Now, because you've got that bolt that's welded in the center of the plate, it locates it. See, it went right in with no problem. Now, all I have to do is take my floor jack, put it under the lower control arm, jack it up into place, and the spring, for all intents and purposes, is in. After you get that in, I would recommend putting the shock on. And the reason why I say put the shock on before the end link is simple. This shock is going to bottom out and it's going to stop that spring from doing anything funny. You always got to remember when you're working with these springs, they can hurt you. There's a lot of kinetic energy stored in these. You start compressing them, they want to fly out. If that thing hits you, it's going to hurt you. You're going to get a trip to the emergency room. Let me get the floor jack under this bad boy. 